Okay. This being 7 p.m. on on Tuesday, the 17th? 18th. 18th. Tuesday, the 18th. I'm going to call this meeting of the Arundel Planning Board to order. We have one. Oh, no, wait. Where's, where is Anne? You told me I had everything in the packet and I don't have the, the uh, ag agenda. No, I do. There's only one item on the agenda. So we'll start with a uh, call to order. Can folks hear me? Yes. Thank you. James Rather from Southern Maine Planning and Development Commission. Um, members of the board, just to make sure I understand the the, the sequence of events here, uh, is it typically to, to summarize the application? Is that is that what happens at this stage or? No. Not yet. Okay, I actually, I apologize. I, I don't have a, a, a list of board members immediately nope, handed. That's, so. that's quite okay. Brian Kane. Zachary Shapiro. James Lowry. All agree. Susan Roth. Rich Ganong, I am the chair. Uh, we have uh, we have the approval. <laughs> <laughs> I think Marty needs to turn his hearing aids up because I can hear my echo coming through. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Okay. <clears throat> we have uh, approval of the agenda, approval of the minutes of May seventh, two thousand twenty-four, public comment, and then under new business we have the Braley subdivision subdivision preliminary plan. Then there will be other business if the town planner has anything for us, and then we're going home. I'll make a motion we approve the agenda. I'll second that. Motion made by Paul Green, seconded by Susan Roth to approve the agenda. Any questions? Any discussion? Hearing none, those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? It is unanimous. For the minutes of May 7th, 2024, Yes, we were all here. Uh -huh. I'll make a motion we accept the minutes as written. I'll second that. Motion made by Paul Green, seconded by Susan Roth. Any discussion on the minutes? Hearing none, those in favor? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? It is unanimous. One upstate. I abstain. I wasn't here last minute. You weren't here? Nope. No, he wasn't. No, you're right. Okay. So we have five in favor, one abstention. Yep. Got it. Uh, since there's nobody here from the public, I don't think we need to ask for public comment. We'll, we'll go straight on to new business. Braley subdivision, a subdivision preliminary plan. The applicant is proposing a three lot cluster subdivision, five housing units on Old Post Road, tax map 12, lot six. The parcel is 21.8 acres in the R3 and BI zone. The plan includes one single family home with access from old post road and two duplex lots with a shared private way. DCB Properties LLC is the property owner and Glendon Braley is the applicant. Paul Gadboy, PE is the applicant's engineer. Oh, I have a question. Um, on the minutes, for today, it says 21.8 acres, and on the minutes from May 7th, it says the parcel is 10.4 acres. It, the purchase and sale says 10.4 The entire parcel well. that, that, that is owned by Marcel at 21.8 acres, Ethan's purchasing uh, 10.43. Okay. So the entire parcel is 21. So okay. I don't know if the yep. right plan says total area property, Ethan's proposing to buy 10.43, and the remaining land will be owned by DCB Properties. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, the BI and the R3 zone. Got it. Yeah. Okay, Joe. Thank you. Sure. Okay, take it away. A um, couple of comments. Uh, we received some comments from Public Works. They uh, talked about site distance. Obviously, that's something we're, we are working on, and Ethan has secured or will be securing an easement from uh, the abutter in order to cut some trees so we can obtain the site distance looking north from the driveway entering the duplex. Looking south from the driveway into the duplex, we have 350 feet plus. The proposed driveway for the single family 
Again, we have looking south, we have 350 plus. Looking north, we're a little shy of 350. That means we're gonna have to actually have to take some ledge out, this ledge knob in the city right in town right away that we're gonna have to take down in order to get that uh, site distance. So okay. once the project, if the project moves forward by making those few changes, that'll actually improve the site that's going on at Corn, which you know they have it at speeding for old coach road is about 35 miles an hour, but in that intersection or that corner, it's suggested to go 25. Mm -hmm. So obviously we can't use the 25 for sight distance. Or can we not say? So we're still using the 350. Yes, still use the 350 limit. I think someone could go 35 miles an hour through that zone and still be uh, within the speed limit. Yeah. Well, come on, Paul, that's theoretically people only go 35 on Limerick Road. Yeah, that's correct. So uh, <laughs> we are obviously going to obtain the 350 required in from all directions from both driveways. And in order to do that, we're going to get an easement from uh, the Embargo of William McKay to make that work. So um, we should be able to find what site this. That's the first thing we looked at because that's obviously huge problems if you can't get site this for access. You'll um, you'll provide us with that documentation. Absolutely. Yeah, we'll be able to fine tune the numbers and give you actual site distance or, or distances. Fire department. Oh, did you field, field measure that? Yes. Okay. Yep. So actually where the ledge is, I really can't feel measure it. So I'm like, I actually have to locate the road, do some topographic survey, and then run a profile on that. But the eye, I, I, yeah, you know, so I can't see. Like you can't see it through that. I can't really look. I, I can kind of tell I'm going to get it, but so we'll end up doing that to get the exact site distance. Okay. But you were able to, you were able to see it visibly looking mm -hmm. the other way. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. Um, the fire department didn't have any issues with the cluster of development. We're trying to, we are proposing uh, a single dry, we'll say, uh, for the two duplexes. Um, doing a turnaround that actually fits the fire department's uh, private way, turnaround requirements, so a fire truck can enter the, the two duplexes, turn around and leave without backing back into old post road. Um, as far as uh, the assessor's office at Blueberry, uh, Blueberry Lane was approved, so that'll be the road. That'll be the name of the driveway access and duplex will be called Blueberry Lane. I know the planner made a comment or that if I had the contour line, they were on the plan, but unfortunately my labels uh, somehow got turned off, but the armament between our major minor contours um, the blue and edge of wetlands. I think Ann said if I got it to her last Friday, which I did, I just um, went and got it, that we probably would be okay for it. at least calling up as complete and scheduling a public hearing. So I did see Yeah, Ann did mention that an updated plan with the contour lines turned on was submitted. No, she did. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. um, but it was there, but for some reason that label, those labels were off. And I think that's when I bought the PDFs and sent it out. Um, we are asking for two waivers. Um, one was for the high intensity soil survey. I mean, the uh, nitrate. Uh, hold on, I'm sorry. Let me go back to the geological. Uh, we're going to go above ground utilities. I think that seems to make sense to me. Um, we always have a power pole across the street. We'll have a set of new poles and we'll go overhead to two units, two single family units. There is a pole, there's a pole on our side of the street. I'm sure that will really service the other single family residents. I mean, going underground, it's tied in with the board, but I'm just pulling overhead electricals for those units. There's not a road. Uh, and the other one was the uh, high, hydrological assessment. Products not going to be over in the gravel aquifer, so I just thought we could ask for that waiver. Um, I guess besides that, um, wetlands, we're not doing any village. We're not, we're not proposing to go any wetlands in this property. So here's the wetlands for the group. Drivers go up against the wetland. Same thing here, the wetlands behind the duplexes. And the future service submission I'm making this duplex back and there's be more room between the duplex and the wetland. Um, but we're not proposing to go any wetlands on the project. The well, I do that is show well location zones because it actually gets. Um, we want to make sure that there's no issues with septics. All the septics that were uh, Chris probably developed tested on the property and did the high intensity soil survey. 
and we have two sites on lot three. We have two sites on lot two. And we also have two sites on lot one, as required by the code by zone projected and all time reserved area for cluster. So obviously we're going to use test bit 13 for this duplex, and we're going to use test bit 15 for that duplex, but we still have alternate locations if we ever need in the future. Um, as far as um, curb cuts, certainly we'll, we'll address the we lot with the width of the driveway for the single family in the future, absolutely. Um, in stormwater, once we have Preliminary plan approval, or at least some sort of approval that you like the layout, and I can start working on how we do a stormwater. The project drains basically to the high point, right in the middle of the site. It drains to a culvert in the northern direction, and also drains to a culvert going under Willow Lane in the southern direction. So, those are the two key points for stormwater at this time, and we'll be looking at obviously stormwater management requirements for the project, obviously. Um, I don't have anything else to say unless. Uh, Offshore parking, we're doing two parking spaces for a duplex, and the zoning reforms requires uh, two parking spaces for uh, three bedrooms or more, I think is what it said. Uh, two or more bedrooms, you have to have two spaces per unit, so we have actually two bedroom units, I assume. Right. And so we're required to have two spaces for each unit. So we have a total of eight for the duplexes. In the single family, well, we have more than enough single family. And that's all I have to say, unless You'd be glad to answer your questions and give me some sort of direction, I guess, for the future. Well, we need to do a sidewalk. Yes. And we can set that up. Okay. Other than that, I, at this point, other than that, I don't think there's anything. Um, we'll have to get into it and look at, you know, you're looking for waivers. Uh, hydro assessment. Why do you want to? Uh, Sorry, no. Go ahead. Why do you want to waive the uh, underground? Pop yeah. Um, it's going to be quite expensive this ledge, so you know to actually excavate for underground to get to the units. Be quite expensive. I mean, overhead. But so the the ordinance doesn't the ledge. ledge. The, the ordinance requires underground utilities. It's not a. It's not a. Situation. Waverable. It's not a waivable item. And I don't think so. The the ordinance that. itself is very clear. Uh, in twelve point eight, utilities serving lots within a proposed subdivision shall be installed underground. That's the entire language of that. Well, that's, that's why I was asking what what the logic on reason was. Is mostly I think it's mostly because the buildings are close enough. To the pole that they're actually close enough to go overhead that we can pose, but just get it. Then it shouldn't it be says, that much of a hardship if it it's that down. close to put it underground. Okay, I'm done with that one. Um, so Paul, I have a question, or yeah. Ethan, I have a question. Are these going to be condos? The um, no, or, the, or rentals? No, just rentals. rentals. Yes, yeah. yeah, I saw that someplace and I can't find it. But I, well, did, I, I, I did I see we what you were going to, it was, it was asked at the last meeting. Stuff. But yeah, we're just going to, we're just going to hold them as rentals mm -hmm. for an indefinite amount of time. As long as we can rent them, I guess. Well, there it is in the application. Should we uh, schedule a sidewalk? We should. Uh, so what do we need? Well, that that it's a question. When when would you all like to do it? <laughs> we can do it in an evening. We can do it on a Saturday. I'm available either way. I'm sure you guys want to get going. I'm at, I, I, I would prefer evening. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Okay. Yeah. Well, evening it's is easier good. with the kids. <laughs> Do you want to literally like, just yeah, done? I now have tea times on Saturdays, so I would prefer a week. Did you want to do it before the next meeting? I'm yeah. fine with that. Well, they, One, they, yeah. then, then this would be a good time for us to discuss the, the next meeting. The next meeting is scheduled for January 2nd. June. Well, uh, I'm sorry, July 2nd. July 2nd. <laughs> Yeah, I want to wait until January. Yeah, I, we used to have all yeah. this time off. The next meeting is scheduled for July 2nd. Uh, I don't know if you guys plan on traveling for the 4th of July, if you're going to be around. 
how that's going to work. I'm here. It's fine. I should be available. So yeah. one night between now and July second. Well, we can no. do it. On, we can do it on July second. I'm fine with that. Yeah, that's fine. Do it at six p.m. on July second. That yeah. work for everybody. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody make a motion. Does that work for you, Paul? Sure. Okay. Somebody make a motion. I move that we uh, schedule a sidewalk on this July second. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh yeah. Susan second. made a motion to have a site walk on July 2nd. Is, second there, it. is there a second? second? A second by Zach. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? It is unanimous. Um, if you could stake out where the building locations are going to be so we can see yeah. those. Is yeah. it cleared, Paul? Or it's is all it, wooded. It's all wooded? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We'll yeah, put the stakes up, but it would be good. Okay. So, all right. Thank you. You're welcome to park on Willow Lane. That's that's where I live currently. There's not much parking on the shoulder. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Is uh, is this is the public hearing uh, scheduled for the same time? No. no the public hearing same. won't be scheduled until after we've deemed the application complete. Uh, Deeming it complete doesn't mean that we approve of it. It just means that we have everything we need to make a decision. Okay. Plus, plus. We we generally try not to deem it complete uh, until we have everything that has been worked out because theoretically it could be deemed complete and then denied because it, it it gives us the information we need. So. Mm -hmm. You know, we'll try to get it, make sure that everything is lined up. We will deem it complete, and the public hearing would be at the following meeting. An email I got from Ando said that if I got the contour rate back to them, um, that on by Tuesday, it should make the application complete. So I feel we have a complete application. If you go through the checklist, it's complete. We haven't done the site walk. There may be something that shows up at that point. That creates the problem. Well, yeah, but it's, I've always I've always done a site walk and then schedule a public hearing. I've never seen that not happen with the Rundle Planning Board, but mm, I actually then, thought I was going to ask the question. You know, I, I, would, I would just roll along with punches and thought we normally didn't do a site walk until we had the application. That's what I thought too. Yeah, but, right. So Sidewalks deemed again, complete. I mean, the application the seems complete. Then we do a sidewalk. Then we approve the fund, right? No, we we don't we don't deem it complete. I thought uh, it was first. We yeah. usually do the site walk before we get it before we do anything else. It's not how I've always seen it right here. <clears throat> I, I don't think so. It's not what we got out of the planning. Not how I've always seen planning. it right. I think we, we can't do anything we before, before we go through the trouble of having a site walk. Right. That's what I thought too. Yeah. I thought we were only gonna listen. If you guys want to go that way, that's that's it's cool. Opposite <laughs> day. <laughs> I mean um, that's the whole process about me going through the checklist and so to deem the application so, complete so we can move to a sidewalk and public hearing. Right. I can't move forward with any engineering until at least get the public hearing through to the planning board. So provided you get the contours and whatever Ann needs in oh, by Tuesday? Yeah, we have got that. That was part of that. Oh, right. yeah, okay. that was, so she's all set. That, that was the updated It was this wrong. Tuesday. Correct. Oh, okay. So I thought there was more no. coming. Um, no. That was that was the updated drawing you just so then reviewed. the but application even, would be deemed right? complete. Even if we deem it complete, I don't think we should have the public hearing next week or in no. two weeks. We've got to do the site walk. Yeah. We've got other stuff we have to deal with before we schedule the public hearing. Okay. I'm good so yeah, that. I mean, then make a motion and deem the application complete. We have we have enough information to decide one way or the other, so that that by definition is a complete application. Doesn't mean it doesn't mean it's right. Just to be tell you. It, that's right. It doesn't mean it's right. It doesn't mean it's right. <laughs> so I move that we deem the applicant application complete. Okay. There's no way. Uh, just the one for the hydro. Uh, right. Just the one for the hydro. Right. Is there a second? Okay. Okay. M application, but motion by Susan Roth to deem the application complete, seconded by Marty Kane. Any discussion? Hearing none. I, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. It's unanimous. 
and then and we have a, and then we'll have a sidewalk on July second. That's correct. And we have not voted on the sidewalk. Right. I move that we vote on the sidewalk for July second at six p.m. Okay. Did, did you second that, Zach? Second. Okay. Motion by Susan Roth, seconded by Zach, to have the site walk on July 2nd at 6 p.m. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. All right. Anyone opposed? It is unanimous. We will see you on the 2nd. Got it. Thanks, Richard. Thank you. And then for the town planner, do we have anything that you need to bring to us? Yeah, it was just one quick item um, regarding a recently approved subdivision, the Jasper Lane subdivision. Does that okay, ring a bell? Yeah. yeah. Um, that there was an illustrative um, change that we need the applicant to make um, that uh, something that the assessor found on the, the subdivision plat. They essentially had, if folks may recall, the sites bisected by R3 and R4. They had the zone switched on the map. And so there, they, it was an illustrative issue on the map. They depicted it wrong. They're going to make the change if that's amenable to the board, and just resubmit that, resubmit it to the, re the registry of deeds with the updated plat, uh, and just consider it at that point an administrative item. Yeah, I would, I would think so. It, the, the, because there's no change to any of the plans. Exactly. Right? It's just the wording is. It's just like yeah. a label in AutoCAD was wrong, basically. Was there a change in the ownership of the property? Not yet. No. Because I, there was a whole group of people in the, uh, the, that, in the discussion, office. that discussion is still an ongoing, ongoing. situation. He says that we, they think most of the people that were in the office were his contractors who were going to be doing the work. But there is some discussion out there about he may be selling the entire project. Okay. Uh, yeah, more power to him. He went through, he got everything, all the ducks lined up for somebody to come okay. in. Okay. Okay. So the notes, which one is this? It's R3, R4. The what? Oh, the Jasper Lane, Glencoe. Well, we can expect that a plan will come up and we all have to sign it again. Yeah, I think that's I think that's yeah. probably what's gonna have to happen. They're your folks can come by and just sign and then they can, yeah. can record. Yeah. Okay. Just have have Ian send out an email once it comes in and we can all stop yep. in. Okay. Thank you. Anything else? Uh, that was it. That was the one item. Thank you. At the next meeting in July, we have to elect officers all over again. It's the start of a new year. <laughs> Hurt me. <laughs> uh, Paul's not going to be here. <laughs> no, I'll be here because when you're not here is when you get elected. <laughs> I, I've been through those. Uh, I don't know if you guys have gotten, you, know, you must have emails about the invitation. To, uh, I think we went last year. Was in, oh, yeah. Oh, I, is that anybody doing that? And, oh, the three of us went, right? Yeah. Yeah. I, I wasn't planning one. Okay. But that doesn't mean if, if any of the rest of you want to go to the to the SMPDC. Yeah, uh, we, we would encourage folks to come. We're trying to just drum up turnout and. Uh, it, it should be a nice time. We food there and stuff. So please, please come next Wednesday night in Lyman. Uh, we can, if you don't have the email, we can get it to you. That has the address and stuff. Oh, they were going to have it in Portland again. I was going to say, where are your muck bucks? No, and a, uh... it's right here. Yeah, the, uh, the barn in London. Oh, really? Yep. There's on Route One One. Yep. I can forward it to you guys if you haven't got it. it Anything else by anyone? I have a bunch of comments. I move that we adjourn. We are done. 725. You know what? I wasn't at the last meeting, so I wasn't aware that he was here. Uh,